Hey there, honey bunnies. Welcome to episode 104 of the Sovereign Storytellers podcast with your host, Michelle Wolf. Surrendering for success. That's what we're going to talk about. But this is the last podcast of 2020. I haven't uh, made an, or the last episode. I haven't made an episode in a while. I went through a real, uh, like, I don't want to say a down spell because that's not it. There's um, cycles of productivity and then followed by cycles of not not productivity. <laughs> cycles of catching up on TV. Episode 5 of The Expanse has not disappointed. <laughs> Neither has episode two, uh, episode 2. Season 2 of The Mandalorian. Yes, excellent. A Suitable Boy on Acorn. Awesome so far. Lots of good TV, which is good for the not productive parts. We have this concept that we've got to produce, produce, produce. 24-7. Nothing in nature produces 24-7. Not a goddamn thing produces 24-7. Not natural. Not nature. And, we, you know, we are nature. We're not cyborgs. <laughs> we, we, we are still wrapped in a meat suit. So, uh, what does that have to do with surrender? Well, nothing and also everything. This one's been uh, on my mind for a while, but it just it wouldn't come together. And so, of course, one thirty in the morning, when I have to be up at 7 to go do some family stuff tomorrow, oh, now it wants to come together. That, that's surrender. Surrendering to natural flows. Surrendering to being a little short on sleep tomorrow. But catch up within 24 hours or so. Because I am an Olympian napper. Hell of a napper. Okay, so. Surrender. I remember when I first started hearing that concept. Around the time I first heard about the new age stuff when I was 16, 54 now. So that was like a hundred years ago, <laughs> uh, 15, something like that a long time ago. And then I really heard about it a lot when I was 21, tw no, no, 22, 23. My daughter was a little bitty. Um, and I, of course, in miracles crossed my path and, Started looking into that and didn't connect to it at all. But it was during that time that every Christmas I started asking to be awakened. I knew I wasn't awake. I knew that much. I knew that there was far more going on with life and the meaning of said life than I could perceive. I, I, I knew that. So every year I asked the... Uh, cosmic santa whatever you want to call the spirit of santa to awaken me i ask for it every year i still ask for it every year because i know i'm periodically awake and mostly a napper <laughs> i already said i'm like a multiple gold medal napper in so many ways so when I first heard about the concept of surrender, I was like, oh, hell no. That is not what this girl does. Things get hard. I just keep going. I don't, I don't do that. Now, mentally, I would collapse a lot. And that's where I was confused. And that's what I want to talk about. Because we are going to have to surrender to these uh, to the cyclical nature of productivity. And we, there's the, the word feminine creation is out there a lot. Um, it's not that the masculine energy are, aren't also cyclical. It's that our false construct of capitalism and, you know, got to work so much to make money for the people who make money off your money 
<laughs> who you're making the money for, you know, all the, all those things that I barely understand. So you'll hear that word feminine. We're moving into the feminine way of getting things done. <clears throat> I would say we're moving into the natural way of getting things done because hyper feminine is no better than hyper masculine. Somebody, I mean, eventually you do got to do some shit. <laughs> There's, we need both, right? So I'm going to talk about it in terms of natural cycles rather than getting caught up in the feminine masculine debate, which I can't speak to. There's some subjects believe it or not, that I, I just can't speak to because I get, I, I understand it physically and energetically, but my mind gets lost in all the debates. And so I'm just like, oh, whatever, fuck it. Let's talk about natural cycle. So when I first heard the word surrender, I interpreted that to mean giving up. And I was like, what am I giving up to? Well, to God, do Duh. Nope. That's not how it works. And the word duh has been a part of my vocabulary since I think it was about 12. But I am working on it. I, I am starting to catch that I need to find a different word. So apologies for any offense on that. <sighs> um, I interpreted it as collapse. So there's... Five types of trauma responses, generally speaking. Fight. You're going to whoop somebody's ass. <laughs> Flight. You're going to run and outrun the person who want, maybe wants to whoop your ass. Um, freeze. You you can't do anything because your body just locks up and you're stuck. A fawn is when you overflatter, overgive, overplacate. You've seen that a lot toward a certain president by a certain party. <laughs> a lot of fawning, flattering, fancy words, and lots of shenanigans. So there's that, which is a legit trauma response, right? If you grow up with an explosive narcissist, somebody in the family, usually the spouse, figures out how to fawn that person into, you know, de-escalate through fawning. If you grow up with that, then you can end up in relationships where you turn to fawning because you don't have any boundaries. So if you haven't run across fawning as a trauma response, give that a quick Google. And then the other one is flop or collapse. Fight where you just fall over. It's like a possum. You just are like, well, I'm doomed. I'm just going to fall over play dead and hope I come out of it. So fight, flight, freeze, fawn, and flop. Previously, when I heard the word surrender, I equated it to the flop response. You can think of flopped as learned helplessness. You've tried so hard and you haven't had all your efforts have been, at least according to your brain, ineffectual and so you're a loser and so you just give up you just surrender and be helpless and turn into an olympic level victim thinker right <laughs> so that's like the extreme end and i had a lot of that victim thinking uh well i you know most of my life i was functioning the exact opposite of my human design i'm a three five mental projector so Growing up in a generator world, in a work, work, work environment, um, burned out several times. So lots of bitterness, which is the theme for projectors when they're offline. Bitter and way, way, way intense. Everybody else can, everybody else has it figured out and I'm never going to figure it out and I work so hard. And we do, right? Projectors can work circles around a lot of people for long periods of time until all of a sudden you can't. Your body gives out, your brain breaks, <laughs> shit happens, <laughs> and you surrender by default. But that's not surrender. That's not what we're talking about. 
What I'm talking about, and business note, insert 15-second commercial here, Holistic Magic, Creating Your Life with Human Design, which was From Wounded to Wise, which was Sovereign Storytellers, is much more complex now. And we are focused on surrender. And when I talk about what we surrender to, because you, you don't have to take the course, obviously, in order to apply this and watch your life start to shift. The, uh, my dream would be the whole world would start practicing healthy surrender. Because that's how you jump into the fast moving, easy, flowing current of creation. So, holistic magic is open. It's that michellewolf.com forward slash holistic magic because when you are whole, that's where the magic is. When you are giving more time and energy to your meat suit and not treating it like an afterthought, and then treating it like the temple of glory that it is, that's when the magic happens. So holistic magic, six months, all nine centers of human design, we're focusing on the body. We're going to pull some magic in, some rituals, not to create dependency, because y'all know I hate that, (laughs) but to reacquaint you with your body. So reclaiming the temple, which is a VIP experience, is a piece of this structure. Three centers focused on the body. The next three centers were focused on our home, the home that our body houses our soul, our house houses our body. And then, so we'll spend that time with three centers and then We're going to spend the last three centers focused on reconnecting to the land, clearing, um, claiming, getting a healthy relationship with the land, which holds your house. Isn't that interesting? So that's how it stacks up, right? Land holds your house, holds your body. And we need to bring that all into wholeness. And that's when shit gets real quick. So the last uh, episode I did, 103, was... No... 102 was getting comfortable with money because if you do this, your money will start to increase. So you need to practice getting comfortable with it now. And it does involve surrender. Okay. Surrender to what? It's quite a tangent. Uh, Oh, and the last day to enroll for holistic magic is January 8th. And here's the last thing I'll say about it. I included Forest Reiki one and two, which has an, a relatively simple certification process. When you finish level two, you can start offering sessions. So I'm asking you to make a significant investment. I'm also giving you a powerful tool to make your money back. So you really can't lose. Yes, it's a hefty investment up front, but it's six months of all kinds of stuff. You can't even believe it. And if you've taken it before... The only the structure is the same. Everything else has changed. So it, there's an alumni discount. So if you've taken it before, I highly encourage you to take it again because it's different, way different. Okay, enough of that. Surrender to what? Now for the third time, <laughs> I promise we're going to get to it. We're surrendering to that natural flow. We're surrendering to the fact that we are cyclical. We are flesh blood and bone. We belong to this planet. This body is here temporarily. Everything's held together. If you want to go human design with your magnetic monopole, which is in your G, your identity center of love and direction, all of that is temporary. We're made out of the same things that the trees are made out of, that the water's made out of, that your cat, dog, hedgehog, hamster is made out of. We're no different than the plants in this cyclical work, rest, work, rest. And in the rest, the only reason you think of yourself as lazy during the resting is because of these multiple generations where wealthy people figured out They could work the shit out of other people, make a lot of money, 
And, you know, it didn't matter if the peasants or whatever worked themselves to death because there was hundreds more to be had. Okay, there's some deep core stuff there. And we probably, I'm, you know, we will look at that in the class, but you can look at it right now. That voice that shouts at you when you need to take a nap and you feel bad about it, that's the voice of the factory owners. That's the voice that made it to where you had to leave your family farm and go work spinning yarn for pennies a day with no benefits and blah, 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 okay? I want you to really hear that that voice that thinks you don't deserve to function as every other piece of nature functions is bullshit. It is a steaming pile of bullshit. It's not real. It sounds real because you've heard it for your entire fucking life. And it's nobody's fault. It's not your parents' fault. It's not their parents' fault. Everybody did what they needed to do, what they thought they had to do, what they had to do to survive. Okay? Here's the deal. Here's the dealio. Those days are over. That's what's falling apart all around us as the world bursts into flame. As COVID takes us out, as we have, of course we would have incompetent leadership on both sides. Across the board, we had the preparations for a virus. They got shredded apart because of money. And then, of course, here comes a virus, as viruses always do. This pandemic shit ain't new. We've been here before, not that long ago. But, you know, of course, right? It's like, from the soul view, from the big picture, long-term view, it all makes perfect sense. On an individual level, it fucking sucks. It sucks for some of us, and it's deadly and tragic for others. So we're we're in this conversation. We're having to slide on that continuum of individual experience, massive suckage, to soul level evolution, humanity, um, arc of time kind of thinking. Right. So we're we're sliding around on that line. And we can do both. We're surrendering to, we can say surrendering or we can say returning. We're surrendering to the return of being part of nature, of being connected to our body, of honoring our home, and being deeply connected to the land, wherever that is. You can be living in Manhattan. You are still on land that has a history, that has souls attached to it, that has thought forms and energies and fairies and elementals and all the invisible things. All of the team invisible land things still exist. Concrete is just crushed rock. It's still a natural substance. Glass is melted sand. Somebody made plastic. Like, you can't escape it. So there's the oneness. There's the individual, the oneness, the the individual experience of today blows. <laughs> and then the soul arc of yourself, which is like, this is one life in lots of experiences you're having in lots of different dimension, dimensions, possibly happening all right now. <laughs> And then the arc of the human species, the planetary arc, the galaxy arc, the sun eventually will blow up kind of arc. So we've been for generations working against the natural cycle of productive, not productive. Massive production and creativity followed by lots of laying around and doing nothing. That interpretation that we're producing and so we're legit. 
We are contributing members of society. We are good. We are good, good, good little girls and boys. And non-binaries. Okay? It's a false construct. It's not real. Then when we go into the natural, non-productive part of the cycle, then we are bad. Because we're not producing. We're not spinning that yarn. We're not cranking out books. We're we're not doing anything that's making money. Now we're bad. So we rest because our body has to and we feel like shit about it. Or we force ourselves to keep going till our body collapses and then we really feel like shit. It is insane. You know I want to sing some Cypress Hill right here, but I won't. I won't. (laughs) I'll spare us all. (laughs) I do love that song, though. But it is insane in the membrane. Okay, I just have to say that much of it. It's nuts. It is crazy. It has to stop. How do we do that? How do we stop something that's so ingrained that we think we are garbage people because we haven't written the great American novel while we've been on lockdown? We've barely, I haven't even, I haven't sent an email. I don't think I've sent an email to my list all year. I'd have to look, but I don't think I've sent a single email. To my list. My poor little neglected list. I'm sorry y'all. I really am. I think about you often. But I have not been able to get that going. I will though. It's on the calendar. If it's on the calendar it'll get done. So the falsehood. This false construct. This The women in Less Hustle More Human Design. Which is my eight week. uh, Let's figure out procrastination and resistance. And get some shit done. Every single one of them struggles with this in the beginning. My projectors, the people who come to me to focus in on human design, readings and coaching, my projectors really struggle with this because we have so much open space. We've really absorbed the message that if you aren't making money, if you aren't being productive, then you are a garbage. You're a piece of garbage. You're trash. What good are you? Stay-at-home moms deal with this. We're not allowed to be stay-at-home moms anymore. I knew a woman, and I, I love her so much, and I absolutely understood what she was saying when she said there was parts of her that uh, really resented um, the femi- the feminist movement because it made it, now you're bad if you want to do the traditional housewife mom thing and it's not bad right so that's a whole nother tangent I can get going on but I'm trying to stick to surrender so we are surrendering to the natural flow and because we don't know how to do that it feels like hard work it is hard work this is the deconditioning part of human design you have to look at your chart Look at your open centers and all your open space because that's where you're going to have more of this cultural um, generational baggage that you've got to unwind, more limiting beliefs, to become become a sovereign storyteller, to tell the story of your life, to create and repeat and ingrain your own authentic narrative. You have to unwind this shit. So here's the here's what you do with this. What does surrender mean to you? Do you think of it like I used to think of it as, well, I'm not giving up. Fuck that. <laughs> I'm, you're not going to knock me down. Now I want to sing the, I get knocked down, but I get up again. I'll spare us that one too. I often think of songs. I have huge soundtracks in my head. <laughs> Although I'm not really a big music listener, which is weird. 
Um, or do you see it as, look around you. Look around, honey bunnies. Nature has cycles of growth and rest. Fields produce and then they lie fallow. Part of the problem is the fields aren't getting to lie fallow and they're being forced, raped, if you will, to keep producing. And they're pumped full of chemicals and stripped down nonsense. What is that? Damn it, I just watched a great movie about soil. Crud. I don't remember it. It's on Netflix with Scott Woody Harrelson. I think it's on Netflix. Roots? No, not that roots. A different kind of roots? Something about roots and dirt and stuff. Somebody will remember. You can Google Netflix, soil, Woody Harrelson. I promise you'll find it. So, what's it going to take for us to get out of our heads and into our bodies and start to teach ourselves. Well, let me back up. First, we have to hear the voices in our heads, which you know what I'm going to say here. You need a daily practice. 15 minutes of silence so you can hear the voices in your noggin. When you hear the voices, then you can decide is that true? Then you can slide a little, you know, rationally emotive behavioral therapy in there. You thought I was going to say Byron Katie, didn't you? <laughs> She's a little on the controversial side now. So <laughs> let's just go back to where the work came out of. Rational emotive behavioral therapy. Challenging your thoughts, right? Is it true that you're a bad person because you spent all day watching The Expanse and The Mandalorian. No, Michelle, you're not a bad person. <laughs> Are you a bad person because you uh, had donuts for breakfast or whatever you did that you feel bad about right now? What did you, what have you done so far today that you could, you either could or are now beating yourself up about? I only wrote 500 words and I said I would write 1,500. I said I was going to email my list and I didn't. I said I was going to not yell at my children and I did. I went to bed last night and swore I was going to get up early and exercise and I didn't do it. What are you beating yourself up for right now? And is it related to this nonsense that you are supposed to be producing and monetizing all the time. I have just now gotten to where I can crochet something and not have Etsy flashing in the back of my brain. You ought to put this on Etsy. You ought to start yourself an Etsy shop. Well, can I just crochet a fucking scarf already without having to think about Selling it for $25. We're so trained to it. I, it comes flying out of my mouth and I, at people and I'm off and always I regret it. If you don't know Linda Delator, she's on my Facebook page. She and her sister Silvana make beautiful things. She started during the lockdown picking up lettering beautiful lettering gorgeous first thing out of my mouth you ought to start yourself an etsy shop <laughs> right after i posted i was like god damn it i said i wasn't gonna do that what i should have said was that is gorgeous how does it feel to make such beautiful letters with such a cool looking pen how's that feel how satisfying is that to be on lockdown and creating beauty? But nope, the old Etsy shop came flying out of my mouth. Mouth, okay? So that is the anti-surrender. That's under stress, shut in at home, 
Still got to think about making money. Shit, she works for the cruise, in the cruise industry too. So talk about shit show. It's those little things all day long, those little micro decisions that we make all day long that are wearing us out. Then we get locked down. I know there's so many bad parts about it. And also, so we're going to do some both and, and also, it has really shown people how, how tired, so tired, how tired they are. That to 18, 20 hours a day, they're going, 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 going. You work an eight hour day, it's not really an eight hour day. There's commute time. It's like eight and a half or nine hours. Get home, you're hitting the ground, running, doing home stuff. Get the kids to bed, get all the stuff done. Pay a few bills, whatever, fall into bed, start all over again. Saturdays are taken up with all the stuff you couldn't get done. You know, madness. Madness. CEOs don't work like that. At the highest levels... Those predominantly men have an enormous amount of free time. What do you think all that golfing's about? They're working in a natural rhythm. There's wide open spaces because creativity cannot happen in a crunch. Innovative ideas, uh, uh, high level global type problem solving cannot happen when you have. 16 hours a week to yourself. There has to be unstructured time. I've never played golf. I have friends who love it. I don't get it. But wandering, I can see where wandering around on the golf course chit-chatting with friends is a hotbed zone for some creative thinking. For ideas to get bounced around. For flashes of insight to occur. All this napping. Mad creativity. I had to start keeping a notebook to write it all down in. I always had to do that before, but it got worse. My creativity got worse. (laughs) My ideas went up. Now, admittedly, my life did not change that much. I had the privilege of already working from home, of already being a Zoom master. <laughs> it, you know, I need people. I don't need people like most people need people, but I do need people sometime. And I really felt the pinch when I couldn't go. You know, it's been really lonely. But. I also have had it, relatively speaking, pretty easy. So just want to acknowledge that. But the and, the creativity. Can you imagine if we don't go back to 80 hours a week, hours and hours sitting on the highway, uh, that more people get to work from home If they want to, not everybody wants to work from home, which is baffling to me. But not everybody wants to work at home, and not everybody does well when they have to work from home. Zoom meetings, if you're on them all day, flipping exhausting. Physically, emotionally, mentally draining. You can't get up and walk around like you would in a normal environment, right? So we're surrendering... To what's not working. We probably don't know yet. For most people I'm guessing. They don't know yet. What's going to be the healthy choices. Going forward. Because we're still in the middle of the shit. Right? We're still in the churn. We can't figure it all out yet. But we've got a good solid glimmer. That what we were doing. Doesn't work. So. In times of transformation, in the beginning, we know more about what's not working than what does work. We don't know. You know, when I moved out here in 
in 2015 and, and quit working a regular job and started creating my own business from scratch, I went through quite a struggle for several years feeling like a big loser uh, because I wasn't working at a regular job. That I didn't, I had stepped entirely away from anything that you could call a career. <laughs> now I'm unemployable. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> okay, so being out here in the woods is, which I, I know some people think I moved out here to get away from people. I, I did get away from people, but I moved out here because this is where my ex-husband would agree to live. I didn't want to live this far out. So I know I've heard this several times. Well, you're just hiding out in the woods. Well, yeah, not really. It's the only way my husband would agree to move here. And I needed to be here for my family. So this wasn't my choice. So take your assumptions elsewhere. Um, I don't know why that bugs me so much, but it does. Uh, assumptions, I guess, are just... They're just not good. Like, they shut down energy. They shut down conversation. Unless you want to argue with people, which I don't. Although, I guess I just did. All right, now I'm really tangenting. Well, it is 2 o'clock in the morning, so. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can get back on track 37 minutes later. Surrender to natural cycles. What is the voice in your head say when you are tired and you just want to sit on the front porch and stare out into nothing stare out into space listen to a bird listen to the wind blow what's the voice in your head say is wrong about that where do you make yourself a bad person because all you want to do is lay in your bed and stare out the window That's not wrong. That's natural. Your body is trying to get you doing what your system is supposed to do, which is work and rest and work and rest. Following the creative urges. Following your human design means your creative urge might need to go in a notebook first. <laughs> If you're a manifester, you get to act on your creative urges right away after you've checked in with where you add on your emotional wave if you're an emotional manifester. But paying attention to the rhythms of the moon. If you talk to people who follow the moon, and I spent a year doing that, which was wonderful with my friend Nina and I took a a course from Carrie Ann Moss, the Matrix lady, the Matrix chick. <laughs> Love that movie. Another good movie to watch right now, right? With everything falling apart. So the Trinity lady. Um, and it was uh, tracking the moon for almost a year, I think. And it really taught me a lot uh, about the new moon exhaustion. We're coming up on a full moon. So, of course, here comes a, a new episode because my energy picks back up. I didn't know that. I thought that was all a bunch of hogwash. Oh, the moon. I'm tired. You're the moon. I knew full moon was a thing because my first career type job was as an emergency medical technician. And everybody who works in emergency medicine or with children or with, you know, in mental health hospitals or settings, everybody knows that the full moon is a thing. Like people do. They get their, they, they've got a lot of energy. <laughs> They're acting out. Things aren't going well if they don't have impulse control. Like, there's a lot of energy at the full moon. But for some reason, I thought, well, the rest of it was a bunch of crap. <clears throat> so I didn't pay any attention. But when I did start paying attention, I was like, oh, the whole thing is a thing. We really do get tired around the new moon. We really do have more energy around the full moon. Generally speaking, some people are flip-flopped. They have more energy on the new moon and less on the full moon. But generally speaking, 
People have a lot more energy when the moon is full. It makes sense when you think about it. But we don't follow those cycles, right? When's the last time you looked at the moon? Now, if you listen to this podcast, you probably looked at it tonight. <laughs> but if you're new and, and you haven't been tracking the moon, that's a great place to start with the concept of surrendering to your natural cycle. So surrendering is the most powerful thing you can do. I had it completely backwards. Of course, I was only 20, what, 22, 21, 22 I didn't know shit from shit. Surrendering is not flopping or collapsing into victim energy and giving upness and why bother and nothing I do ever works. Blip, 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 you know. The martyr, the martyr. Oh, it's so heavy even to just talk about it, right? We all do it to some degree. If only living a life built on if only. If only this were different. If only that was different. If only they or her or him would get their shit together. You want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? (laughs) It's a bunch of people stuck and complaining in their victim thinking. I was the worst. I don't know that I'm that much better. I'm going to say I'm about 50% better only because I got really caught up a couple of years ago in some pretty scary suicidal ideation and was kind of like, either get a grip on this or you're out of here. Come on. (laughs) Something's got to change. So, surrender is powerful. Why is it the most powerful thing you can do? Because your body, your emotions are where your superpowers live. They're not up in the stars. I know that we pine away for for the stars. I know that I did that as a kid. I used to stare at the, stare out my bedroom window. I had no idea why this happened, so I didn't tell any, anybody because I thought it was crazy. Just stare up at, at the stars and just bawl. I didn't know what was wrong. I didn't know why I was, like, aching in my chest because I was looking at the stars. I didn't know what that was about. Which plenty of people feel like this planet was like a mean trick. <laughs> Like, we got sold a, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> a bill of goods or whatever. I <laughs> can't even think of what that saying is. You know, like, we got ripped off. Here we were floating around cosmic star beings or whatever the word of the day is. And now we're in this heavy, slow, not even like heavy weight, like I am heavy weighted at the moment, but even if you're not heavy weight, it's being physical is heavy. It's hard, but it's not. It's heavy and it's hard and it's tedious and sloggy and slow because we were taught that the heaviness of the physical body is to be rejected and ignored and chastised and shamed and resisted at all costs so it became that way. Do you think when you were three years old, running around with the nightmarish levels of energy that three-year-olds have, that you were tired? You weren't tired. Ask your mama. She can tell you you weren't tired. <laughs> How many times have you heard an adult say, I wish I had half her energy as her Toddler Tasmanian devil goes ripping through the grocery store screaming at the top of her lungs. I wish I had half her energy. Well, you did have it and you can have it. We have that much energy. We turned the volume down because we were told to. We had to turn the volume down. Okay, that's okay. We don't need to get caught up in all the shit. We just have to start asking ourselves... 
let me just throw out some questions to you and you can use these as journal prompts or just drop them in your noggin and think about them. Ask your dream self to communicate to you about these concepts. And I'm probably not being as clear as I'd like to be, but hopefully this helps. Your body is the key to everything you've been struggling with. Your resistance to your own emotions and the emotions of others is the dam across the river. The shit between you and it in this case is the absolute immaturity of knowing what the hell to do with your emotions. Immaturity, I'm not calling you like a big baby. Oh, you big baby, you can't even figure out your emotions. Well, yeah. <laughs> I guess I am saying that. Because it's true. We don't know what to do with our feelings. We're a mess. We're four-year-olds living in 30, 40, 50, 60, on upwards to damn near dead bodies. We don't know what to do with ourselves. Again, for generations we've been told we're wrong. Everything about you is wrong. Get to work. Oh, you want something? You want some more food or some days off? Screw you. Get to work. You don't get to work, I'm going to withhold the money and you can't buy food and you die. Get to work. Then I have time for feelings. Emotions. Ew. Ew. Feelings. Yuck. Okay. But your body is made out of energies. It is a conduit for the energies of emotions, which are a conduit for the inspiration of the divine. And when you bring those energies together and mix them up and get comfortable with them in your heart and your gut and your head and the bottoms of your feet, your tailbone, your throat. Oh my God, being in a physical body is not hard. You still may look at the stars and feel a little melancholy, but you won't wish to be elsewhere. When you say 100%, all right, I've been living this way for however many years and it ain't working too well. I think I'll try something different. I think I will marry myself to this body. I will commit to being human. Guess what? You're human anyway. You ain't going nowhere. You're already stuck in a body, so fussing and fighting about it... <laughs> You're never going to get what you want. <clears throat> it's not going to happen if you continue to struggle because the energies have changed, in, changed. We just talked about that. Everything falling apart all over the damn place. Surrendering to the body. Surrendering, which is cyclical. Surrendering to emotions, which are cyclical. Learning how to grow up and reacquaintance, what am I trying to say? Reconnect, become reconscious. <laughs> I'm guessing there's some better words for this, but to awaken, to be aware <clears throat> of the sensations that emotion create in your physical nervous system. To figure out what, what of those five options is your overwhelmed response. Your, it doesn't necessarily have to be trauma. <clears throat> it can be just your response to overwhelm. Like you just can't take any more in. You've gone to Costco and now you're done for a week. Because your nervous system is like, Oh my God, get me out of here. I cannot Look at another 500 pack of toilet paper. Take me home. I need a nap. Okay. <laughs> so what, what is your familiar bad feeling place? That's another place to start. Okay. Let me hit you with some questions. <clears throat> what does the word surrender mean to me? You might want to mind map this. Throw the word surrender out on a piece of paper. Draw a bunch of lines out. And on each of those lines, just brainstorm, dump everything that surrender 
that word brings up in your mind and your stomach and what are your thoughts about it? Throw all that down on paper. Then you can question, what, why, where did all these impressions and words that I just threw up on this paper, where did those words come from? Who taught me to work all the time? Who, where did I get the message? And it might not have been direct, right? We get messages from just our peer group. It's not like your dad had to whoop your ass and tell you to go to work and never take a nap. But your friends were doing that. And we shame each other. Oh, quit being lazy. Oh, you're such a slug. Or whatever. Where did I get the messages that creating for the joy of creating is bad? Where did I get the idea that everything I have I do has to have a dollar amount attached to it or ain't worth nothing. Where'd I get that idea? Do I want to keep that idea or would I like to explore the world around me? Would I like to even just watch my pets or my plants or the seasons, that's another thing we're going to focus on in Holistic Magic, is getting back in touch with the seasons. The seasons will teach you. Your land will instruct you what cycles and surrender to cycles looks like. Okay, so explore surrender. Make some notes about that. And then start exploring, where do I spend most of my time? In my head, thinkity-think, thinking. Have I checked in with my feet lately? Have I even looked at my feet today? What What is underneath my feet? What about my house? I walk on the floors of this house all day long. Do I ever really look at them? Well, judging by my floors, I haven't looked at them in a while. <laughs> Somebody needs to get out the vacuum. I have to have a talk with my cleaning lady. (laughs) Talk about lazy. (laughs) Oh, God. Okay. What about your body? Do you treat it with respect? And I don't mean I eat healthy and I'm a vegan and I drink nothing but smoothies because I don't want cancer. I mean... I only put food in my face that makes me feel loved. Okay, you can eat healthy, but if you're eating healthy from a fear-based place, it's not helping you as much as you think it is. The occasional cheeseburger might not be unwarranted. When you eat, when you put food in your face, do you say thank you for it? You didn't raise that lettuce, most likely. If you're a lettuce farmer, I take that back. But somebody who wasn't getting paid very much picked that lettuce for you. Somebody else shoved it in plastic bags. Somebody else took it off the shelf (laughs) when it was found to be contaminated with E. coli. (laughs) Apparently, I need to wrap this up pretty soon. I'm starting to get punchy, but... You know what I mean? Like, when's the last time you said a real heartfelt gratitude, grateful prayer for the food that you're stuffing in your face? When's the last time you asked your body, what do you really want? What would be nourishing to you right now? And your head will be like, (laughs) ding-dongs! Your body does not want ding-dongs. Now, the part of you that doesn't want to feel things might want (laughs) ding-dongs. The part of you that's about to catch on that you're going to get some control over what's happening here might want you to eat some ding-dongs because that'll shut that show down real quick. When's the last time you treated a shower or a bath as an act of worship? Where you just described yourself with care. 
and tenderness and appreciation. I promise you, if you were in a wreck tomorrow and you got kicked out of your body and an angel came and said, well, this one wants to exit so you can have that body, but it doesn't look like what you think it should be. It's maybe older, maybe it's overweight, or whatever our culture says is bad. Let me tell you, you'd be all over it. You'd be like, oh, hell yeah, give me that body. I don't care. I want to be alive. Right? If you still had family here that you loved and didn't want to leave yet. You know, like, we get up in the morning and pick and poke at our faces and say bad things to ourselves. When we need to get up in the morning and and say, thank God you're still here. (laughs) I still have a face. I still have some hair to brush. Now, it's getting thinner, but I still have some. (laughs) Oh, God, you know, this is how we reconnect with surrender. This is how we start to access the real power. The power is not in hard work, not for you. The only person benefiting from that kind of construct is the people at the very, very top. And they're not totally blameless. I mean, and they're not to be vilified either because that doesn't help you. Nobody's blameless. And nobody is to be vilified. Okay, so what are my thoughts about surrender? Where am I at most of the day? Am I aware of my body? Am I tending to its needs? Or am I doing the bare minimum just to shut it up? How am I dealing with my home? Have I said hello to my home? Have I said thank you for... Thank you, Ruth, for staying attached during the last storm. (laughs) It sounds silly, but it starts to shift your energy. It starts to make you aware that you are in a physical body. And you have a physical home that requires your attention. Now, whether you want to think you have house elves or uh, brownies or fairies or little energies that live in your home, it's irrelevant. You don't have to believe that to honor and take care of your home as sacred, sacred space. And again, are you keeping it clean from a place of love and honoring? Or are you keeping it clean because if you don't vacuum, you're a bad person? So we're starting to open the doors to become aware of our motivations. How do we feel about surrender? How do we feel about our bodies? What is our familiar bad feeling place? And do we want to continue going there? (laughs) Or would we like to create some new spaces? Would we like to look at our happiness threshold and see if we can train ourselves to raise that up a little bit? If If you don't let yourself feel anger, You're not feeling the full force of love either because you're numb. You're numb to it. You spend all your time in whatever's familiar. You let your anger turn into resentment and snarkiness and jealousy. You spend all your time where it's safe. So... You're not getting the full experience of energies, emotional energies running through your physical body. You're not aware of them. When you are, you'll be shocked by the amount of power that you have. So you have to look at your beliefs about emotions. Beliefs about what does surrender mean? Where am I fighting against my natural wreck? rest we're a wreck because we're fighting our rest work cycles but where am I fighting against that how do I feel about my body how am I treating it why am I treating it the way I treat it whether that's ultra good or ultra air quote bad how do I feel about emotions do it which emotions am I allowed to feel which emotions am I shamed about which emotions 
did I say which emotions? Which emotions am I ashamed about? Which emotions will I absolutely not allow in my system? And everyone's like, yes, I want things to be good and give me $100,000 or whatever. And then if you actually got it, your head would explode. Go back and listen to episode 102. <laughs> Same thing if you're like, I, I can't wait to fall in love and meet my soulmate and blah, blah, blah. And then you meet them and your head explodes because you can't handle it. Which actually, if you really can't handle it, you won't even cross paths with them. They won't see you. You won't see them because you're not even at the same frequency. A lot of times we don't actually want things to get good because we don't know what to do with all that energy. Things getting good is more emotional energy. And if your nervous system cannot handle the intense emotions, you're going to fall into one of your five stress responses and or trauma responses you're gonna fight you're gonna run run like the wind (laughs) you're gonna flee you're gonna freeze up you're gonna fawn you're gonna have any boundaries or you're just gonna flop over like a dead rabbit or like a fat cat have you ever seen (laughs) it's not just fat cats it's just that all of mine are fat right now it's winter We've been on lockdown. We gained a little weight around here. Um, When they hit a sun patch (laughs) or they get in front of the heater and they just thunk, fall over on the ground, right? That's the flop. Your familiar bad feeling place is in one of those five zones, by the way. Okay, so question surrender. Question your body. Question how you take care of your home. Then start questioning this is the big one and it's harder. How do I feel about how do I feel about my feels? How am I using the external environment as a way to make sure things don't get too good? How am I handling my very appropriate grief, anger, stress response to our current circumstances very normal very normal am i handling that have i processed it am i wallowing in it or am i just outright rejecting it there's a whole continuum there right it's okay to slide up and down that continuum some days to be fully in the grief and the processing some days to be in pity party land and some days to be just like shutting it off because you just can't do it today. Okay. Where am I stuck? Where am I holding back? Where am I making sure I don't feel too happy? If things got good for me, who would I worry would be mad at me about it? If things aren't good, who am I worried about that I'm disappointing someone? If I don't monetize every scarf I make. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Who do I feel like I'm letting down if I'm not working all the time and making all the monies? Okay, start to pick this stuff apart. You're living wrapped up in some deeply embedded, conditioned responses. And since you're not a toad, you can learn. (laughs) You can (laughs) self-reflect. You can ask some questions. You too can ask Santa Claus to wake your ass up. Okay, so surrender is a direct pathway to success. Surrendering to XYZ for success. Surrendering to nature, your natural self. Not the construct, not the conditioned self. Not the part of you that's doing their best to get it right. In the, within the script that you've been handed. My God, look how hard we try. 
Look how precious we are that we want so much just to get it right. We just want to do a good job, not realizing we've been set up that we can never do the good job. It's never good enough. It's never enough. And it's set up that way. And that's sad, and it's okay to be sad and mad. It's okay to actually grieve that. When when you wake up, like, holy shit, when you watch The Matrix, for real, like, when he wakes up, that wasn't easy. <laughs> it was a hard experience. It's hard for us, too. And it's not about, oh, the QAnon people are wackadoos, or the Republican Party is, you know, the personification of evil in, on the planet right now. Yeah, that's true, and (laughs) parts of that are true. Parts of that are not true. We are never going to know. So this is another episode, but we will never know the truth. Searching for the truth is crazy. There's just your truth. I always come back to, I have to make decisions based on being able to look at myself in the mirror and being able to go to sleep at night. Every, that's individual for everyone. I look at the options. I listen. I know people think I don't listen, but I actually do. I consider, I contemplate, because I do leave myself unstructured, massive amounts of unstructured time. I raise my kid. I'm done with that. I have more time. <laughs> but, and then I say to myself, What decision do I need to make here that means when I get up in the morning, I can stare myself straight in the eye in the mirror and that when I go to bed at night, I can feel like I'm doing the best job I am capable of for this day. That might change tomorrow. But to think that you're going to awaken and you're going to see the truth, let's let that one go along with this idea that we have to produce and work 24 hours a damn day. Oh my God, it is, I've been yammering at you for over an hour. Are you still here? Bless your hearts. I love y'all so much. (laughs) Okay, I am going to stop myself. But if you're struggling, try surrender. If you think you've got to work harder, try resting harder. (laughs) Whatever it is you've been doing, do the opposite. Start to play. Start to look at this as a big, dumb game. And your body's got all the answers for you. All you have to do is start asking it. If you want to go through with us as a group for six months, it's no joke. Like, don't sign up and think you're going to coast through it. There is no coasting. (laughs) The people who've signed up already are already experiencing the energies. They're already (laughs) getting their cages rattled so you know go to the website check it out that michellewolf.com forward slash holistic magic <laughs> i hope to see some of y'all there and remember i'm giving y'all a way to make some of your money back so who does that who says here Make this investment because it's going to trigger all kinds of growth and transformation in you. And I'll give you a way to help you make some of that money back, if not all of that money back. So check it out. So much love. Let's wrap up 2020. 2021 is not going to be any different (laughs) for a while. So let's just keep doing our best job for today. And... Till we talk again, think less, feel more. Seriously, think less, feel more. And I'll talk to you next time.